and welcome back to another one of my thrilling videos. So today, uh, a little bit different actually, uh, we're going to be looking at a twin lens reflex camera, uh, specifically the Helena AI. Um, not the uh, biggest expert of, of you know with using these cameras, um, but it was one that I kind of wanted to do a review on and kind of have a go at using. But there's a bit of a story um, to go with this, so I'll get into that in a minute. So uh, just before we get on with that, uh, just a little bit of background knowledge. So as I understand it, uh, the Helena uh, kind of brand of camera came out of Hong Kong um, in the um, early 1960s. They weren't uh, thought of as the best brand. They were seen as kind of like a good budget brand. Um, a lot of people um, in the 60s, as I understand it, if you, if you had a TLR camera, you were seen as a, you know, bit highbrow, a bit middle class, and I think people kind of aspired to look like maybe their heroes or people that they saw around with cameras. So um, these were kind of, uh, I guess, mass produced to a degree. Apparently this particular camera was considered to be quite a reasonable one, but there were others in the Helena line that were considered not as good. Um, the camera comes with, um, like some of the cameras of their time, kind of like a fixed lens. Um, just from memory, or just by looking at the front of it actually, it's a, a fixed 80mm f3.5 um, and um, you have um, four shutter settings, you have the bulb setting, 25 frames per second, 50 frames per second um, and 100 frames a second. Um, and um, you know it was um, to be used with a 120 film which you can see this down there. Um, I uh, shot uh, with Ilford film HP5 but the one I used uh, somebody gave me was some expired um, HP5 film um, which I think had an ISO of 50 so that was outside all day long um, this is 400 so you can get away with a little bit more but I haven't shot with the film um, in view here so just bear that in mind that the, the film that I had a go at was an ISO of 50 um, but I'm just throwing this in just to show you the type of film so if you want to be shooting with a TLR camera um, you want to be using 120 film. So I'm going to move that out of the way. So um, just before we get into that, you can see on the camera as well as a nice leather strap. Um, that was made for me actually by uh, somebody called Salix Moon Leather. Um, I told them that I needed a, a strap for this camera because it's quite a heavy little thing. And, uh, and they made it for me uh, from scratch, all handmade. Um, so if you're interested in that kind of um, in that kind of thing, or you want to get you know maybe a similar kind of strap made, I'll put their uh, details in the description. So let's just jump in and have a look at the camera. Now, I'm not an expert by any means on, on cameras generally, but especially not these kinds of cameras, but we'll see how we go. So as we said, it's got a fixed uh, lens on the front. And basically the way that you get things into focus is by turning and it's very, very stiff. Um, I don't know how regularly this got, got used, but whilst I was trying to take some pictures on my tripod, um, it was really, really stiff to turn that, so I don't know if I have to put some easing oil. Um, so on the top here, you've got all your measurements like you would expect to see on uh, the cameras. So if you want to get things in in incredibly specific, then you've got those measurements there. Here as well is where the flash insert would go, just in there. But obviously I didn't use it with a flash. Um, so we turn it around this way, and this is where you can find out how to set things up on the camera generally. And I I'll give you a little tip. So along the bottom here, let's just get it into focus, right there, here we go, that is where you find your f-stops. So you can see 3.5, 4, 5.6, 8, 11, 16 and 22. Um, and that works absolutely fine, um, not a problem at all. Then um, along the top here, it's a, bit, it's a bit fiddly to show you, there's a little ring that turns. So if you can see I'm turning that ring. now. If I move the camera forward, I'm just going to put it onto bulb mode, B, the red B. That's better. You can see there's a little arrow. And when I'm turning that, that is sending you on, you know, your, your shutter speed. So 25, 50, or 100. That's what it goes up to. So that is where you uh, can do those settings there. Now, how do you take a photograph on it? So. Here is the lever, it's your shutter speed. Lever, shutter speed, shutter speed, your shutter, <laughs> going mad. Um, now, how do you take a picture? So, what you have to do, you've got this little lever here. Now if you press down, you might think you're taking a photograph. 
but you're not. What you have to do, is, as somebody said, you have to prime it. So you have to click it up like that. And then you know you might want to say, okay, we're going to have it on a 5.6, and we're going to set it on 50 frames per second. Okay, so now we're ready to go. Uh, now I don't know if you can see that. I'll try and get it in the right light, but you if you see it, I'm going to click it. There you go. And that's your photograph taken. So if you get a TLR like this, and you think you're taking the photograph like that, you're not. Please make sure you prime it, click it up, and then press the release. And there you go. So um, I'm going to take take this strap off just for this because it's a bit cumbersome whilst I'm doing this for you. So how do we load the film? Now there are plenty of these around and I'm not going to be loading a film but I'm just going to explain. So on the bottom here is a little catch and you have to, as you see, arrow, you have to lift it up and turn it in order to get in the back. So I'm just going to do that and then we're going to continue the review. Okay, so as you can see here on the back of the camera we have a reel, turn it in the light, which rotates. Now that has got a spool on which was left over from the previous film. This comes out, which I'll show you, so you have to pull this out here, it's a bit fiddly doing it in one hand, and that all comes out as a unit. And at the top here, you have the leftover spool from your previous um, film. When you have a new film, you have to load it in the bottom of this unit here, and click it in to these segments here. So you would, you would get your new film, and you would click them into there. And then there's a big piece of paper that comes over the top, and you connect it to the spool that's already been left in the camera from the, uh, from the previous uh, running of film. You would then get the piece of paper and secure it inside here. And then what you do, bear with me, because this is tricky, and then you start rotating. And the piece of paper comes up, and you keep turning, and then you start seeing a series of letters and numbers. Um, I would suggest that you go online and look how to load a uh, TLR camera because I haven't got any spare film to show you. But once it's done, you'll get the number come up on the back, in the back door. You see number one, you roll it on, you shut that up, so you're ready to shoot. Okay, so last but not least, um, is when you're ready to shoot, what you have to do is you have to lift up uh, this area here, the hatch area, and it opens up. And basically what's going on here is you have a mirror inside the camera and it's reflecting up into a piece of glass inside. I will give you a close up in a second. And you can either look just directly down into that, uh, but what you get is a, like a mirroring effect. So you have, it's, it's a bit weird at first. You look down and expect to see, you know, what, what you expect to see, but it's mirrored. So you have to kind of make adjustments. Um, and then on the top here, you can swing this over and it's kind of like a little magnifying glass um, that allows you to see the image uh, more clearly. Um, I actually have an attachment for this, which was on the old camera, which was on here, and it's a little viewfinder. And it does exactly the same thing using the mirror system, but it just allows you to frame it up a little bit. But I personally prefer looking down. I feel like it gives you the truest, um, um, what would be the right word, the truest image of what you're seeing. So when you're ready and you're happy and you have it hanging over your shoulder, you just prime that lens like we talked about. You prime that lens and then you just fire it off. So just before we come to the end here, I'm just going to try and show you a slightly uh, like a better look at the mirror so you can kind of see what you're supposed to see. It's a little bit tricky of my current setup, but I'm going to do that for you now. Okay, this is proven to be very difficult as a, it's a very shiny surface and you're seeing me in the camera, but if I just move the camera kind of um, out a little bit, you'll see right there, that's my drinks bottle sitting on the side. Uh, and then this magnifier here, if I pull this up, you probably won't be able to see it very well, but now that's probably the best way. So that is glass. It's very, very sharp and you're looking through the lens directly out but it's, it's a very strange experience but that is basically what you're going to see um, and then you just take your photograph but it takes a bit of getting used to because I'm pointing it at a slightly off angle um, at the bottle oh it's not there we go so that's what you see out of it and that in a nutshell is a TLR camera so that is the Helena AI uh, TLR camera I've tried my very best to give you 
um, a reasonable review um, in the space that I am able to. But um, let me know your thoughts. Have you used a, uh, a TLR camera? Have you got one of the more fancier ones? Um, please let me know. Have you got a Yashica? Um, and what's that other fancy model? I can't think of it now. I'm trying to trying to do too much. But yeah, um, that's me done. And I'll uh, I'll see you all soon. And let me know what you think of the pictures. This is me signing off. And because there is no flash, again, I'll have to make a noise. Again, terrible. I'm really, really sorry.